Hello and welcome to Connections Forum for Relationships, Expression and Healing. And we are in episode 57. And our special guest today is Darinka Blagai. The topic is Art as a Conduit for Conscious Evolution. Some words about Connections Forum. We are offering single episodes and so short series of talks and interviews regarding the most important areas of human life, such as relationship issues, personal expression, and self-development, as well as healing of all these areas. And the purpose of our show is to give you inspiration and also to teach you new skills with which to handle the issues which are connected with art here as a content for conscious evolution. And you can watch all replays on our website, Hangout on Connections. Before I continue with the introduction, I'm hearing an echo, and I think we have to mute. Who oh, is not speaking, please mute yourself. OK. So before we introduce Darinka, I talk a little bit about myself. I'm Heidi Hörnlein from thepowerofrelationship.com. I'm a hangout host, as you see here, with Connections Forum, but also with the Wisdom Factory. And professionally, I'm a transformational coach, a relationship counselor, and a voice therapist. And I work with people who don't feel really completely realized in their lives. And I help them to explore their full potentials and to live a deeply fulfilling, happy life in love and joy, as I do. <laughs> I'm also the founder of Paradiso Integrale, which is a cultural association here in Italy and also a virtual space, because from there we are doing our shows. And yeah, we have a retreat here and a guest house, and we invite you to come over to Italy whenever you come and stop by. And I think it's enough for me, Margarita. You continue. Okay, I am Margarita Cristalotis. I am an intuitive life and business mentor who help professional women overcome emotional overwhelm and stress and restore their energy so that they can have fulfilling relationships and watch their career flourish. I'm also the creator of numerous uh, online programs, and if you uh, uh, have seen me uh, in person at shows that's because I work with crystals and crystal tools to help my clients I have also a, uh, a retreat center here where I invite private clients for retreats and my web website is the crystallotus.com and today I want to introduce Darinka Blaga and she is a keynote speaker, experienced creative catalyst, fine artist, who lets you experience yourself as a dynamic master of aligning energy in the now. She delivers insights, presence, personal and group activations by engaging the people presence in the power of the moment. For 27 years, she has been on the leading creative discovery path of the unfolding now and her mission is to live in the open heart and to facilitate this she has created the community project the slash the smile office dot com so Darinka can you introduce did I miss something there I know I can't pronounce your last name well it's black guy right <laughs> it's good it's all good I'm happy to be here, Margarita. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Heidi. Um, is there something else? No, I think that was a fabulous introduction. Great. And, and so uh, I have been admiring your art for a lot of years. And uh, we are also very good friends. And I'm so glad that you're here to share your gift with us here on Google+. Plus. And uh, to start out, I wanted to ask you, how did you become an artist? <laughs> I'm just born this way. 
<laughs> it's a it's a birthright. Everyone is an artist. I mean, we're here to be um, we're here to be activators. We're here to attract, and we're here to create. And that's um, something that just basically was a part of my life um, when I was quite young. My mother did a lot of drawing with me, and I think she opened that up for me. And then she never drew much anymore after that. But for me, it became an entire life vocabulary. Okay, so uh, when you discovered this gift already uh, in the beginning, how was your early journey of actually discovering the, the deeper level of what you could do? Um, well, just a quick story. When I was 18, I went to an arts camp for the first time in my life. I was older than the counselors. Uh, they were 16, so I was an old kid coming to a camp, but I really wanted to go. I had such a deep desire to go. It was almost like a soul calling, and I ended up in a field uh, drawing a tree, and the facilitator had said to me, uh, you can't leave until you finish drawing that tree. And I said, really? But I'm hungry. <laughs> And so I sat there in the field for the next two hours. Everyone had left. I completely zoned out, and the tree, uh, essence of the tree, the spirit, and I, we merged. And suddenly an inner communication began. And that's how the drawing and the focus and the inner connection opened. It was like I was initiated. So that was the opening. And from there, the next time I had an opening was in university when... I really just um, came to one class where all we did was not think, not talk, but we just uh, drew or painted or uh, made something for an hour and a half with absolutely nothing but the flow of the moment. And then that created another opening for me. So those two things were my initiations. That is so interesting. And I, the trailer we put up on the event page, you show people how you could do sort of art breath. Uh, can you explain what that is for you, and when did that happen? Art breath is a modality that I created after about 20, 23 years of painting and drawing. And I'm a professional artist, so this is what I've been doing since I was 19 years old. Um, I started to work seriously professionally when I stopped doing graphic design. That's when I was about 23. And, uh, and at that point, I knew that um, I wanted... I made a, I made a decision, actually, because life is about decisions, right? So I made a decision to um, work for life. I decided not to work for money. I decided not to work for people. I decided not to work for companies. I decided to work for life and to be divinely guided. And that's how I've lived. So yeah. um, that created a very different trajectory. And Art Breath, um, I wanted to share the vocabulary that I developed, which is my own vocabulary. It's not the copy of Picasso or the copy of someone, but it's an inner vocabulary. And I wanted to share the methodology of how to develop that genius within. And that's how I created Art Breath. So Art Breath is a modality that will be shot in video form so people can access that. It's not quite ready, but uh, I'll be posting more and more videos this spring, and, uh, and then we'll have that modality up. I'm focusing right now on the Smile Office project. That's my first priority. So the, the Art Breath, to talk about that first, that makes me think of yoga. So is Art Breath a, a type of yoga? In, in fact? Well, yoga means uh, union. That's what the word means. And so art breath is really about um, developing your own vocabulary. It's your union with your divine self. So you can say that. Yeah, yeah so you're the, the yoga of art, that's, that's you then. <laughs> Must be. So um, tell us a little bit also what what uh, your your profile here on Google Plus is the Smile Office. How, what what is that? I just want to uh, bring bring us to presence before I answer this question. So if we can all just come to presence, I want to open up an energy field that we will be encased in through the entire um, interview. 
because that's one thing that I do is that I can open up energy, a strong flow. And the flow that I, the divine flow I work with, you'll feel it. So I'd like to uh, put the intention, if you're all in agreement, and uh, you can choose to be a part of it or not, uh, the energy will either accept, you know, will do what you want or not, doesn't matter. Um, but it's available to you if you want to open up your creative flow during this entire interview, then I invite you to just close your eyes for a minute and just go deeply into your heart. And I'm just going to flow the field of energy that I feel and ask for that connection to be reignited in you. Okay? So that's the activation I'd like to offer. And I think it would be sweet if it was running underneath our entire conversation. All right? Here we go. Let's take a deep breath in and... Ah... Okay, that's good. So now that's connected, and, uh, and now we can continue, and while we talk and, you know, we mention many things, that level of presence is now intact and activated. So do you want me to speak about the Smile Office project? I'm going to unmute myself here. Yeah, uh, so that felt good. That felt really good. I felt like this <laughs> coming into the center, uh, and and uh, I know you can do this. But can you explain why we have to do this? Like, can we like to really understand what the actual benefit is to actually be in the field of creativity? Can I call it that? Sure. Um. One of the magic things about presence is that we are all one being. So when we're present, we unite in the, let's say, the strength of that, of that oneness. We are all just aspects of one being, and we have this amazing capacity for each of us to create our own reality and bring to us in our life everything that we're vibrating for. We're actually not here to learn anything. We're, we're a divine being. We can create anything. Though many of us spend a lot of time in the propaganda of learning. And I personally don't believe in it. I've done it too. Um, you know, I've learned just as much as everybody else, <laughs> only to realize that it's not about the learning, it's about the being. And it's about um, the vibrating. So I spend more time now focusing on my vibration. That's really how I feel in my heart and sending out love and sometimes also light. So why is it important? If you don't focus that energy, you're living in default. So you're basically re you're, re you're reacting to things that are happening in the outside world. But the outside world is something you already thought of. It's not something that is being that you are creating if you're unaware. If you're aware, you're actively creating it. Is that a good enough question? Answer? Yeah, that, that makes really a lot of sense. And uh, for those people who have, are left-brained, um, logical, um, structured, uh, that may be feeling a little bit out of sorts. Uh, I just discovered so that Heidi also <laughs> is... Uh, intuitive uh, because she to me is much more logical than me. <laughs> How do you say you? Do you Go want ahead. to trigger? Do you want to trigger my response, don't you? <laughs> or you can just respond your own way. Yeah. You know, I don't think it has much to do with left brain and right brain. What uh, uh, Darinka is talking about is much the spiritual truth uh, and this is right for everybody 
I mean, there are many people who are very good in left train at activity who have done a spiritual path and they're truly aware of, of the, the other, let's say, the other world, <laughs> you know, other, other part of our being. So it's actually doesn't depend on that. And art, yeah, sure, it's more a right brain uh, thing. But you know, we are only whole beings when we have both capacities uh, and uh, exercising both capacities. And for many too much left brain people, it is a good thing to do art. There's art therapy and music therapy and these things, you know, and also not only in therapy form, it, it sounds as if somebody is ill. It's not. It's just to, to have a different way of, um, of engaging with life. And I think art is a very good thing. We don't need to be professionals, everybody, and we don't have to have big criteria of what is good art and what not. But do it. And it's nice to see them professionals, what comes out of it. This is a real joy, and I enjoy your pictures. Will we see some more? Um, more artwork? Oh, yeah, there's mm -hmm. lots of it on the web. Um, there's a, I, can hope, I can show you the few websites that there are, but um, what I really want to focus on right now is um, communicating a little bit about the Smile Office project because it's something close to my heart. I wrote it such a long time ago when I was in my 20s. And if I wanted to write a PhD, it would be called the Smile Office. And the Smile Office is really the heart. So it's basically, um, I'm going to give you a little, uh, just a little text that I wrote for it. The Smile Office Project is a playground for smiling and living a culture of presence. So that's it. It's, it's like, you know when you smile and immediately somebody else is triggered to smile. It's like a perpetual motion machine. There is this, there is this immediate reaction with that. But it's not just the smiling um, with the mouth. It's about the heart. And the heart, the heart smile is really what I'm talking about and flowing the heart energy. That's very easily experienced when you're, in, when you're grooving. You don't have to be making art, but you can be writing something. You could be in a business deal and be so excited because everything, you're lit up. It's more like that feeling of being lit up. That's what I'm interested in uh, playing with with people. Um, the artwork that comes out of me is uh, very metaphysical. Um, it's always been like that. Uh, the work, uh, I've painted the future, I've painted energies that have then later come to be. Um, they're almost like portals, these paintings, and they're very unique because they don't fit into the older categories of abstract, non-abstract, whatever. It's not really the point because I don't work from the mental perspective, I work from the heart and from feeling. So Heidi, you're absolutely right. Everyone feels and everyone needs to feel and the navigation is what the Smile Office is encouraging to be the navigation of feeling and not thinking. So that means don't think your way out of a situation. Feel. Don't think your way out of into like, oh, what should I be doing in my life? Feel what you want because our emotions are a navigational tool. They're there for navigation. They're not there to stress us out, you know, or to be inconvenient. And through art making and creating, this is what I've learned, is that our life is about relationships. And it's fabulous that that's what your, uh, your work is, Heidi. And Margarita as well. Your work is so much about relationships. And what I love about that is that who you are as a being is the one thing that you are relating in the moment that you are with someone. We're always just relating to someone, you know, to the other part of us, right? And I find that a treasure. Yeah, that, that is, that's very deep. I mean, uh, whenever we speak, Darinka, we go to sort of another level uh, or add another level or remove another level like the onion coming in and then at the end there is nothing left there except just the flow and the that creativity source the heart the energy of that and that's why I appreciate you so very much and so is there any other uh, kind of exercise or visualization that you can show us so that we can 
yeah, Heidi wants Can to Can I first, yeah, acknowledge a little bit our listeners or watchers. There is for sure Richard White who is complaining that you didn't say welcome to him and only me, but I invited him into our We Space. <laughs> and there's Johan Kleis, and we are very happy that you are here. And there are other people here I know, but they have not yet appeared in the comment stream. If you want to be named, write us. <laughs> Okay, go on, Margarita. Yeah, so uh, would you share an, another little, you know, uh, practice or a technique that we can actually also get into our heart and have that juicy flow? Okay, well, um, it's about present, so snap your fingers. Come on, Heidi, snap your fingers. I don't know if you're frozen or if you're doing it. <laughs> okay, and stretch yourself a bit because your body is your flow. This body is here for flowing. That's what it's that's what it's here for. That's why we all love to dance. You know, if we stay stiff and just talk, 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 um, we're not flowing. So, you know, um, why do kids not stand still? <laughs> Why is it when we're kids, we're always doing this or, you know, or something like this? Is because it's natural to be moving. So flow comes from movement. That's why it's called flow. It doesn't come from stiffness. <laughs> that was profound. That was really, really I profound. That one. <laughs> okay, we have a comment here. Uh, John Clay says, emotions are here for navigation. They drive me to action, and somehow my heart knows through emotion what I want. That's a great comment, John. Yes, and you don't even, you know, what I love about emotions is that you don't have to know what you want. All you have to know is how you want to feel. And you go with your feeling, it's like, oh, wouldn't I just love to be immersed in something warm right now, you know? But that could even be a color. It might be a hot tub. It might be a warm relationship with a friend that you're going to have tea with. It could be so many things of expression. Yet it doesn't have to be. The mind will immediately try to give you one answer. But if you let your emotions guide you, you will feel, you know, what feels good. But again, it's in the moment. If something is feeling bad, let's say you had lunch with somebody, and the last time you had lunch with them, they complained for an hour. Okay, now they're inviting you to lunch again. Are you going to say yes? <laughs> Maybe the answer is no, thank you. Maybe you don't want to have somebody complain for half an hour or an hour in front of you. If this person is a good friend of yours, then there are ways to divert the attention into the present to say, hey, we're here right now. This food is amazing. You know? Because it's only when we get stuck in our mind we don't have flow. So my first activation for flow would be to move, but also move out of your head. Okay, so that, that I think is a great activation. If you find you're stiff, stand up. <laughs> Move around. You're not going to... There is a very old expression, and it says that um, gloomy minds do not produce um, interesting or creative thoughts, and it's true. Creativity comes from when your mind is in a state of joy, excitement, wonder, curiosity that's when you have a good idea if you're feeling bad about money or yourself or you can't pay the rent and you focus on that idea that will not give you a creative solution that will just give you a lot of dead-end ideas so I want to put it even into the category of abundance abundance comes from allowing a completely in the moment experience. Don't let yourself sit inside old ideas about how it was because how it was, guess what? It's not happening right now. The only thing that's happening right now is right now and you can choose how you want to feel. 
Yes, and so I showed the, one of your paintings there uh, with your your hand, uh -huh. and uh, to to celebrate what you said. <laughs> it was great, perfect timing. Yeah. So um, when you connect with people, Darinka, what is the one thing that they usually say happening to them? A lot of people feel extremely inspired when they hang out with me <laughs> because they feel a sense of freedom because it's in my soul. I let it be there. It's in everyone's soul. And that piece of freedom that's in someone else's soul sees and feels that it's in my soul and I'm activating it. And this is what draws people, I think, to me and to my work, is that they feel something real and authentic is happening. It's not talk, talk, talk. It's actually something real. It's a feeling. You can feel an energy that comes out of me. Because I live what I'm doing. I'm not just saying it. I, that, that's how I am. That's how I create. So accessing, maybe it's a remembering. Maybe that's a nice way to say it. You know? We all have magic. Some of us activate more of it than others. Some of us um, get to parts where we dip and we, we get sad and we completely forget we have magic. You know, but those are only moments and they all pass. I want to uh, show on the screen share here another drawing that you have done that is like uh, kind of profound. See if I can increase it here. Can you talk about what these eyes represent? Um, I was just, uh, sitting with my sketchbook, and this drawing just came about. Um, when I look into this being, you'll notice that most of my characters, I guess all of my characters, are alive. Like, they actually live. So it's not like you're just seeing... A picture, I'm not making pictures, I'm actually showing you live being in different uh, times or space time or maybe different levels of reality. So this, this in this, uh, what the feeling, uh, look at the feeling. First I would just invite you to look into these eyes and feel what you feel and take note of it. Just let's do that for a moment. Just breathe in. I feel a lot of clarity. I feel um, I feel possible. I feel like there is some wonder and maybe some a mystery or a dream that I maybe can't access. But I feel inspired when I look. How about you? Well, I I feel that through these eyes we can actually uh, increase our own awareness and, and the conscious evolution of our own self if we constantly, at least once a day or once a week, go to that horizon where we think people thinks are possible. Can you talk a little bit about how your uh, expansion of awareness have increased while you're doing this. I mean, you're showing us here, but can you talk about that? My expansion of awareness. Um, I know that when I feel love, when I feel my heart, there is this feeling of going forward. I actually can feel a flow of going forward. And um, for me, there's something magical about that, that feeling of flowing forward. It's like, it's like this. It's very consistent. And what I love about it is that when you have that feeling, that is the feeling of expansion. It's almost like, have you watched those, um, those photography moments of plants, you know, when they're waking up and they're, you, you see them completely flowering? I feel like we are experiencing that all the time, but it's a subtle feeling, and we're not always tuning into it. But if you just 
sit in yourself and tune into it, your awareness is that you can be aware that you are flowering all the time. Like there is no end to our flowering. It's a constant activity. There is a comment from Joan again, and he says, it is that feeling that you are in your element. You forget every notion of time when you are creating. So totally right, Johan. That's amazing. And he is creating different things. He is not painting, but he's creating other mm -hmm. stuff. But I think the creation process is everywhere. You know, whatever you do is can be done in a creative way. And everything is creating, Heidi. You're absolutely right. There, there is no. It's only our choice. You know, um, the magic for me in art is that the vocabulary is so broad and so large. I have a vocabulary of color, form, line, um, texture, shadow, um, multiple dimensions and streams, you know. So for me, that's exciting, and I respond to that, so I create in that. But like you, I also have a daily life. I have two children. Um, I have an entire world that's around me, and I create in that very consciously. I create moments with people, um, experiences. I have various different business uh, concepts that are going because I'm excited to um, to bring creativity into uh, the world, and, and I love uniting neighborhoods, which brings me to something that the Smile Office is is offering, which is a neighborhood sculpture. And uh, this is a new uh, new idea. I wanted neighborhoods to be able to, um, you know how we have parks in different areas, and the city of Toronto, where I live, is full of parks and neighborhoods. It's a city that has uh, multiculturalism everywhere. Uh, you can go to Koreatown, Japantown, Greek Town, India Town, Chinatown, and there are actual neighborhoods where many people of the same culture live together. Not quite as much as there used to be, but still, it's very, very rich. And so what I wanted to do was, um, gifting is an incredible thing. You know when you give uh, to someone, you know how good you feel. What if we were to give each other from one neighborhood to another something that changed the neighborhood? So I have this uh, proposal um, of, called the Happy Footprint. And it's to actually give a sculpture or a piece of art to a, either a club, a community, a neighborhood, an organization, or one organization to another. And what I would like to do is create these sculptures and pieces of art so that they activate the energy that we're talking about right now. So they activate presence and joy and inspiration and celebration. And so I just spoke to Margarita about this briefly yesterday because I'm writing a few proposals for the neighborhood. I'd like to incorporate crystals, the dynamics of energy that we know from Tesla um, using um, copper coils, plus also the dynamics that I know energetically from art making in form and space and the way something is created. So this is, this is a good segue, I hope, to bring that project forward. Um, I'm excited about it because it's a gifting project. It's it's something that a neighborhood or a community or an organization can raise money for, and then they can send it to another organization. It can be across the world. It doesn't even have to be someone next door to you. But it's the thought that we are thinking outside of ourselves in order to give something, and and it can be it can be incorporated into something of greater need. I think art sometimes is diminished when there's things like poverty and crisis and other things, but you'll notice that a piece of art um, lasts because look at our history, and look at the history of objects that remain, and they are mostly objects of art. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that's a very good uh, good uh, summary of the history of art because I, I am totally agreeing with you. I mean, look at the pyramids and the Leonardo da Vinci's and Michelangelo's. You know, they still remain. And and I don't know, Heidi, did you want to have a question here? Because you're in Italy, right? Yes, I didn't have a question, but I was noticing how. 
I like to watch Dorinka in front of her art picture. You know, it's it's sort of I see the colors mainly, no, and they are sort of lightening me up. The yellow and the blue, it's, it's um, it is so has so much impact to see lively colors. You know, and I know that often uh, artists are elaborating their inner emotions by doing art, and there are some of these which are for sure a personal um, trajectory to very gloomy things and so on. It might be interesting, but I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I like to be inspired by, by colors and by movement and exactly where you are sitting here in front of. I, I really like that. That was what I wanted to, to, to mention. I mean, art, yes. I mean, here in Italy, it's full of art. <laughs> they have art everywhere, and they don't know how to keep it. You know, very important uh, um, things are somewhere in little churches, not guarded. And the same thing in Germany would be, you know, a, a glass a house around it. To, to <laughs> but they have too much here to, to keep it. But it is a good, good, good um, testimonial of our history, human history, and of our development. You know, it's and so true. I think it's do the same. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's I think it's such a magical thing to notice that we highly prize our creating as humanity. Our creating um, shows our evolution. It's sometimes the word trajectory that you used, Heidi, it's a brilliant word. It does demonstrate our trajectory. You know, it's it's a really big thing that what what we as a culture, as a human culture, how we evolve shows through what we create. I mean, that is how our world is functioning right now. Yeah, and uh Let's see what has happened in the history of art is that it actually can influence the thoughts, the minds, and the uh, technological evolution, the um, intellectual in, uh, inspirations and evolution and development. And also when people are uh, doing art and have art in, in schools, we get more creative individuals who are freer to actually create a wonderful society rather than being uh, limited to uh, rules and and confining concepts. We've seen that with dictatorships and stuff like that, that that doesn't really work in the long run. It's interesting how politics always comes right? Art is created and then politics comes in. <laughs> and I would put religion in with that politic as well. Um, organized religion and politics always rides on the wings of art. And I find it very interesting because that's what makes an, the creative artist inside you and inside me such a magical um, being. Because it's, it's in that moment of creating that creation, the divine, gets to experience itself through us. We are the, the instruments. So, of course, we have the capacity to create anything. It's only our fears that would stop us creating. And it's both politics and religion have created a tradition of fears. You know, fears to not be out of line, fears to not be out of alignment with the divine, fears to, um, you know, uh, make us behave socially. So when we, when we shift um, our attention from our fears to our inspiration, we are generally kind. We are generally loving. We are generally caring and expanding. And we are divine. You know, this is the magic is that we are in an era and in an evolutionary process of awakening to the fact that we are the divine in living color and being. And, and this is really a deep part of my work. It is very spirit-centered and spiritual, but is not religious or politically based. And I never believed in mixing art with, um, with that. I didn't think it was a good idea for myself. So I stayed very pure to just um, 
the possibility of each moment and expanding myself further and allowing the divine to speak through me. Many times I don't know what I'm painting at all. But if you look at my paintings, and if you look at many of my paintings, you'll see that there is a flow. And that flow is consistent. And people say that, oh, you have such incredible composition. Your colors are so amazing. Your paintings are so alive. What you're feeling and sensing and seeing is the divine flow in my work. And that's what I'm encouraging in everyone, is to allow your life to be about that divine flow. Yes. So I think we're coming to the end of this. Uh, episode it has been very exciting and my my personal takeaway is that you are a natural in front of the camera Darinka uh, and a very great inspiring person and uh, I feel like I want to go create art right now nice perfect and so, Heidi what what is your takeaway here my takeaway is that art is a natural part of life and we have de delegated to professional artists but I think everybody can reclaim it and intro introduce it and integrate it in, in their lives and they should because otherwise we are sort of one-sided human beings. Art and music by the way. <laughs> oh yes, totally, totally. So I've enjoyed myself tremendously. I want to say thank you very much for um, the encouragement to be on this hangout. I really, and how does the energy feel that we've been wrapped in? Well, uh, the energy flow I feel was really flowing in. I got overwhelmed. My cat got overwhelmed and wanted me to go in and out and open the door several times. The fire went out in the fireplace, and so. I <laughs> I have to keep my warmth here in, 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 in our hot wave here at minus 13 in Kingston. Anyway, I would like to ask you, if people want to connect with you, Darinka, uh, where should they go? Um, the website is thesmileoffice.com and uh, you'll be able to find connect to my other websites and my other um, you know, productions that I'm up to. There there will be quite a few international exhibitions coming in the, this year and the next year. So I'll be traveling again. Heidi, I may come to Italy. We'll see. But I have had many exhibitions around the world. I spent um, about 10 years traveling and I've had over 50 solo exhibitions in six countries. So I think that now that my children are a bit older, I'll be starting my traveling again. Um, I'm also excited to do um, speaking engagements which really with me are not just about speaking it's about activating so uh, during the event there is a lot of creative activation and this is something I would like to bring on tour so this is something you can look for in the smile office is just being uh, assembled and put together so thank you so much for being here Darinka and uh, Heidi do you want to have some final words Yes, I would have uh, the request to, to Darinka to put all these links into the event page so that people can find it because there was quite a bit of echo, at least on my side, I heard it quite, I didn't understand well your, your website and so when you write it down there is no doubt that people can find it, okay? And final words, yeah, next week we will have another show at the same time with Kristen Tilburg and about the empowerment of women and the money question. So we will come back to this topic we had originally about a year ago, isn't that Margarita? So yes, yes. Thank you everybody for watching. We had male guests. That is wonderful because these th topics normally attract a lot of women, but at least two male guests showed up. The others, I don't know who they are, but I'm very grateful that you were we are here and hope to see you again. Bye-bye and thank you, Darinka. Thank you very much.